Three, two, one. Unpause. Six, Six seven, seven, eight. eight. Okay. Hello there, and welcome to an exciting tournament, Best of Three. Three. I'm AE, and I'm here today with Daniel D. How are you doing there, Daniel? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Excited for these games. Oh, and I'm excited too. I heard this guy casting for the first time yesterday, and I was like, I've got to have this guy on the show. He's got the a, a voice of melting wax in your ear. I'm pretty sure you probably need to see a doctor after you finish listening to this video. But he's got a, you've got a nice sounding voice down. I mean, that's a blessing, right? Well, that's that's mighty kind of you, A. Oh God, he's, he's, okay. That's too much. Too much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the players we've got today are Havoc playing of, as armor. Probably it's it's there's no there's no other. Doctrines, battle groups, commanders anymore. It's all about armor. It's all about two jeeps. Uh, the tawny organizers probably need to, like, I don't know, say one jeep maximum. I don't know, something like that. Versus Theodosios from Germany. So, uh, USA versus Germany today. It's going to be interesting. And they're playing as their relevant f factions. Wow, historical recreation going on. <laughs> yeah, it's good. You know, I'm um, I'm really interested to see this tournament if people find an answer to the double jeep because. Um... You know, I think I think there are some builds that can do it. You know, I think having multiple pios can help a lot, uh, yeah. but we're not seeing that from Theo, so I think he's going to struggle here at the beginning. Well, I mean, Daniel, we come from a Co One background, and we know with the patch 2.602, that patch has been lasting since 2011-12, and there's been many uh, iterations to meta in that time. I mean, there's been times when there's nothing happened for a couple of years, but there's been changes, you know. So. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is a dead meta. It's completely over. And maybe throughout this tournament, we will see some kind of um, evolution. Who knows? I hope so. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be good to see. Got a fun fact for you about Daniel. I organized a tournament on uh, Reddit, my very first ever tournament. The reason I organized that tournament is because somebody was organizing a terrible tournament with no rules, no seeding, no bloody known format. And I was like, oh, I'll just slip in and do this. And I ended up doing it, right? And Daniel ended up playing against my friend Arnie, I remember. And I was so hyped because, uh, spoiler alert, sorry, Daniel, my friend Arnie was able to beat Daniel Go, and he was the only seeded player in my tournament as well. So you blessed me with an underdog victory in my first event in 2011, I think it was. So, uh, yeah, I'll always remember you for that, Daniel. You're welcome. It was all by design. I'm playing the long game. It was also <laughs> good to get on this cast here today. <laughs> okay, fair enough. There we go. It's all fixed. There's no real games like WWE wrestling every time. Let's keep an eye on what Theo's doing then. He's gone for the... Um, Ket and Krat just to try and keep up with the Jeeps, but of course that makes him a target. We've got one Jeep rolling in from this side, we've got another one possibly coming in from the north, and uh, Theo knows it. Yeah, I was surprised to see the Ketten. I mean, uh, Double Jeep is very meta against Wehrmacht, and the Ketten struggles to do its job against Jeeps because if it gets caught out on the edges, it's not going to do much. So. No. Certainly not. We've got a pinned rifle to start us off. Gren's come to defend the MG to continue. More Gren's joining. Seems like Theo's just going to go hard for this plus 10 fuel, and why not? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Controlling the hill is really good. Wehrmacht loves munitions. They're a very munitions hungry faction, and the 216s are up there. So if you can hold it, it's I think it's advantageous, but he's he's given up his beach fuel to do it. So it's, it, 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 presumably the Warble that's coming is going to be very slow right now. Yeah, it is just the most meta game of all time. Actually, we do have Luftwaffe. I mean, I suppose that is meta, isn't it? All the three Wehrmacht uh, commanders are borderline breakthrough, but I'd say Mechanize is the strongest, then Luftwaffe, then breakthrough. Would you agree with that, Daniel? Well, you're leaving oh. out a pretty important one that I, I, I suspect we'll see a lot of this tournament, which is Coastal. Um, Holy crap, yeah, true. And I actually, I'm surprised. Uh, I was talking with Dume about this on a stream the other day. I'm tempted to say right now, looked up and might be actually. The oh, worst. we've got to keep an eye on this. I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah, but I see it. Oh, he merged into it on retreat. He's nice fine. Merge. Yeah. So where would you say coastal um, slip into that like seeding that ranking of their map battle groups? I think, man, I'd probably put it. I, you know, I think it's map and matchup dependent. You know, so it's hard to say. You know, in a vacuum, what's stronger? But I put mech and. Coastal pretty comfortably at the top together. Um, okay. I think Mechanized lets you do more with your Werble wins, but I think Coastal can secure you um, a stronger early game, which is where Wehrmacht can, can struggle. Like, if Wehrmacht is going to lose in this matchup, it's in the first 10 minutes. 
and Coastal lets you not lose in the first 10 minutes, and, and so that's very strong as well. Do you not think that uh, Luftwaffe makes you too predictable? Like, I mean, it was obvious against Jeeps there. Well, maybe not against Jeeps, plural. Okay, yeah, against Jeeps. Um, it was obvious what was happening. So the Jeeps were like velociraptors. They they smelt the scented perfume of a, a stranded damsel in distress and just basically started to eviscerate her on the beach. It wasn't pretty, but that's kind of what happens when you're Luft. You're kind of predictable, aren't you? Yeah, and I mean, I'm surprised, again, to see Luftwaffe in this meta, and especially against the Jeeps. I mean, the strength of, of the Fall Pie was dropping on the middle fuel, building a fighting position, and, and dominating the hill, but the Jeep with uh, armor prevents that because it's going to come out faster than the, the fighting position can come up on a lot of maps. And so I'm really surprised to see, like, I mean, he just dropped this, right? It's It just seems... Seems strange to me. I'm, I'm surprised not to see basically any of the other battle groups. Right, we've got an M8 hitting at the same time the 221's hitting. This Grenadier may not live through this. The ground's obviously going to pursue him. Oh, that was a big OE, AOE shot there, Daniel. I don't like that. It's an, I'm, I'm going to say dead, Grim. Tell you what, the scout car obviously is going to try and get the Panzerbuska. It's upgrading it now, but it itself needs to get out of there. We do have a Faust possibly coming in. Can the Gren reinforce in time? The first one. Oh, he's alive. He's still in the game. He's now in Fausting range. Can he get the Faust off? Looks like he. Oh, no. The M8 got out of the animation. Well, the range whilst the animation was completing there. Panzerbuska is about to hit. Oh, this could be hype. I don't want to cast a cursor again, but this could be bad for the M8. Could be. Oh, he's trying to turn. He's got that glitch turning. Oh, the glitch oh. turning. Dear me. Great micro, though, from uh, Havoc. <laughs> I mean, Theo probably could have. Wow, there's the GG. Yeah, he's quit, dude. He rage quit. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. Oh, dear. I mean, oh, dear. <laughs> I, would I play that out in a tournament? Yeah. But the second M8 going to come pretty, mm. pretty quick. And without the two two one, and then no muni probably to hit, he would hit no muni in the bank. So not going to have a Shrek, not going to have another Panzer Fusha. I don't know what you do against both M eights at that point. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. Um, I, obviously, he's in a massively uphill battle. It, it it's not going to go well, but you want to play it out, in my opinion. Um, oh yeah, well in VPs, right? Yeah, of course. Try for the VPs. Um, there's there's multiple reasons to play it out, but you never know in Company Heroes what could happen. A few mines, I mean, obviously the Greyhound train's coming. You've got the Greyhound train coming, but you never know. A, a mine might hit two Greyhounds at the same time. You just have to play out a little bit, in my opinion, just Always. to see if oh, Lady yeah. looks with you. Something crazy could happen. Yeah, I mean, there's an argument to be made for um, you know conserving your stamina for the next game, and that's what some players will say when they tap out early, but... I think yep. even if that's the case, then just play relaxed and play for the VPs and think about what you could do in the next game. I, th I think, you know, for, for me, yeah. I think you always go. You never know. Maybe your opponent's uh, mom calls them to dinner while you're playing. Yeah, I don't know. I, I <laughs> Exactly. You have to be in it to win it. You have to be pushing your opponent uh, to see how far he can go. And it's kind of a weak-minded player, in my opinion, that saves themselves for the next game. I've never understood that because you're kind of admitting your stamina and endurance isn't better than your opponents. And coming here is as a as often a stamina orientated game, right? Oh, yeah. um, so I think it's kind of admitting you don't feel you can go as hard for as long as your opponent. Surely, as you say, it's worth trying to drain their endurance a little bit if you feel you're the stronger player. And everybody, hopefully, in, in, in an ideal world, everybody getting into a tournament feels they have a chance of winning. I mean, let's face it, that's not the case, but. Yeah, yeah. It would people be nice play out of their minds sometimes. You know, people have good days, people have bad days, and if those intersect, you can get you know surprises like we did in that Reddit tournament. Exactly, <laughs> those uh, many thirteen years ago or whatever it was. <laughs> okay, right. I'm at five seconds, of course. Uh, let me Ready. update the scores before I forget because I'm very good at forgetting about that. Um, oh wow, the Vermont players on the right of the screen, but somehow they. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll deal with that. Right, three, two, one, six, seven, eight. eight. Yep, that's good. very. Look at this from Theo. He's gone for airborne.
This guy is flexing. He wants to go for a Pyrrhic moral victory or a very, very, uh, you know, moral loss. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a sound tactic, you know, especially if you're not confident you can win. Um, you know, setting yourself up to be able to blame the meta is, I think, a, a, a strong sort of outside of the game strategy, if you will. Mm. Three pioneers. This is obviously popularized by Orange Best. Um, people like make out that he was a genius, but it, to be fair, that's a damning indictment of our uh, competitive community if going multiple worker <laughs> units is genius. Because we've we've had players going multiple worker units to get better capping power for uh, decades. <laughs> I think uh, I think when you're the you know generally accepted best player, you maybe get a little bit of uh, that sort of benefit of the doubt or extra adulation that you know another player might not get yeah absolutely all right pathfinders just as ed 80 hertz comes from the co2 only side of the community he's uh, greeted with pathfinders i think that's uh that's how you know that's how it should be of course still a blight in the uh, co2 o sphere but yeah we've got theo he's going to be looking for the comeback in this one He's going to go for it. Like Ed, it. I'm going to catch up with you later, dude, because our boxing night has be re been rearranged by the double excellent turkey for May now. So that's good news. Anyway, what were you going to say, Daniel? Oh, I just, I already like Havoc's open a lot better than Theo's. You know, we're not seeing the double Jeep, but if you do, you know, the, 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 you know, you might think, okay, powers aren't going to be good against the Jeeps, but in numbers they are, and you just get much better map control. You know, and we can see that already. You know, he's secured his beach fuel and. He's not winning this fight on the the um, hill, obviously, I, but I think he's still in a better position. I don't know if target tables are still a thing, but I'd like to think they are because whenever I see a pioneer get close to a jeep, they shred jeeps. It's just about trying to get close to them. And with the more pioneers you have and the closer quarter combat the map is, the more chance of uh, raising that scenario. But we're not against jeeps, so let's talk about what we are against, which is pathfinders and... The utility these little guys offer you is quite tremendous, isn't it, with the utility uh, package, of course. Yeah, we've already got one on the northern Pathfinder. Uh, I'm curious if we'll see the second one sooner, if he'll save for a rifle mate or something. I also want to point out that, that Theo went for the uh, three-man squad here with both Pathfinders. He didn't, didn't wait in base to get the fourth man on his first one, and he maybe intentionally disabled auto-reinforce to not reinforce the, the second one he built. Interesting. Which That's I, a really interesting I strat. Like, yeah. I like it. Yeah. But to be honest, well, it means I, that the rifles come out faster, which is is you know we can see he's got he's on the field with three already. Mm. But also, is is four models maybe overkill? Maybe he's fine playing with three, as you say. Maybe the attritional value of that, and he's of course getting his rifles out sooner. Uh, and let's have a look at what Havoc's going for. Breakthrough battle group. We've got a very first kind of assault grenadier. I don't know if it's actually known as that, but it's certainly got an assault weapon, and it's very assaulting to Theodosios right now. Yeah, it's going to let him take the hill here. Um, and with Tier 2 already coming, he's looking like he has secured his I have not lost in the first five minutes uh, <laughs> where argument that you, that you want to have. Yeah, yeah. And really, he's on Theo's side of the map right now. I mean, d despite what, what I thought was a pretty good open from Theo in terms of the build, he's not been able to do... I mean, he's, he's going to get the cutoff here now, but, you know, this is not the position you want to be in as, as USF, going Pathfinders. You want to be applying pressure. You don't want to be on the back foot. No, he's allowed his opponent to have a lot of munitions as well, and Vermat can really begin to thrive with munitions. He's got a lot of... Uh, We've got a lot of pioneers here that can begin to upgrade. We've got the 221 on its way. It's likely not going to go Panzerbuska at this rate because there's only infantry targets to fight against. So, interesting patchwork quilt of interlocking territory sectors here. There's a lot <laughs> flashing and not a lot connected. Yeah, and I think when, when the goal is to uh, not die to the M8, that this also benefits the Wehrmacht player. Um, both players, if you have half the map, then the M8 hits pretty quick. And it can be scary, but you know it's it takes much less for the Wehrmacht player to get to the counter to the Greyhound than it does for the Greyhound to come out because mortar pool is so expensive. The M8 is 40 fuel, so by the time the M8 hits, if it does hit, it's going to be facing a lot of AT probably. Yeah, not the best calculations from Theo there. He didn't get in position to kill the Pioneer there. It's a tiny bit sloppy. He needs to wake up if he wants to beat this uh, ladder warrior in uh, in Havoc. He needs to get those retreat wipes off. For certain. The enemy has cut us off. We have 
Yeah, it matters. I mean, you know, piles, you can say it's just a pile, and some people say losing one of your piles is part of every good warm up build, but having them around for, for capping and, and especially repairing, I mean, um, being able to, to, to throw two or three piles on the 2 2 1 is, is a big deal. Oh, that was a big volley from the bazookas. Yeah, on the airborne. 2 2 1 wasn't expecting that. And uh, I'll tell I, you I was what. Not either. No, uh, Havoc's uh, got no territory sectors for a while. They're just the two home base sectors for a while there. So, yeah, nice, juicy game we've got here, uh, Daniel. Unlike that first one, which was over as pretty much uh, your prom night lovemaking is, um, this this is going a bit further. <laughs> yeah, I mean, whether or not Airborne is, is nearly as strong as, um, you know, going double jeep armor, it certainly makes for more interesting games. It certainly does. Maybe this would be the gentleman's agreement here. Do we have to be such lesser than men? Can we not strive for more? Like some kind of, I don't know. Who was that president that stood out of his wheelchair and gave rousing speeches? That guy. FDR? Yeah, maybe FDR gave them some kind of speech or something. I don't know. That's in like every World War II movie, isn't it? I believe oh so. My, oh my god, he stood out of his wheelchair. We're gonna fight those Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so the two two one there, rough. You know, yeah, miss, a missed guess on the nade there. I liked he waited to to throw the snare until the captain was there. You know, I think trying to ensure that he had the DPS to finish it off, but it was not enough. Bars popping. Theo is uh, going in on this all infantry anti infantry build. Leaving himself uh, highly vulnerable to a verbal wind, of course. Yeah, I, this is making me nervous. I mean, he's got the Zook, so theoretically, if he just drops the AT gun, then he'll be in a position to fight the the first Werbel, but. Uh, just. It, Having Zooks in that situation is like showing up to a car crash with band aids. It's, it's really not a permanent solution. Right, you get one or two volleys off, and then the Wurble finally decides to activate its uh, white phosphorus rounds, and it's kind of the end of that. It's nasty, isn't it, those white phosphorus rounds? I don't know why they gave it that. It's already anti-infantry enough. Still, you know, Theo, far, far from out of this, um, you know, it's, it's very possible that we see... Um, the, the pair dropped AT come in time. He's about half a CP from it, so. Yep, it could good point. Good point. That, that could arguably save the day. It's a good map for AT guns, despite the built up center. You can do pretty well with AT guns on this map. Yeah, I would just, I would like to see Theo, I mean, he's, he's harassing that, the fuel, which is nice, but I'd like to see him contest harder for the hill. You know, the 16 minis up there are so, and they have such an outsized impact on the game. And, and once you have the hill, that the, you know you can control the middle, you can push your opponent's gimmies. I just I think might be playing a little too wide at this juncture, especially versus the two-two-one. Mm. I was a fan of Theo's infantry uh, tactical positioning at first, but he was actually just going into Havoc's trap there. Havoc set a trap for his opponent and executed it beautifully, and um, basically pushed away two very high-value squads. However, that isn't actually as good as it could have been because you want those squads weakened and on the field for when the verbal vin hits. So, the original hit of the verbal vin now is uh, arguably not as impactful as it otherwise could have been. Yeah, that's a good call out. I mean, you can definitely make the argument that you want to just kind of leave those, try to keep him there, you know, so you can get the chase, like you said. Um, yeah, yeah, you really do. So it's definitely a thing. I mean, we all have practice of that with the L6s for Dak. You want that first hit to be chasing a squad down then you've won the game right uh, exactly. same with the, with the l6s you know arguably you have to do that because if you don't win you know it's kind of an it can, it can arguably be an all-in the warble on the other hand if it doesn't kill anything at first it just waits for its friends and then <laughs> yeah. continues to be a menace it really does so, verbal wind has had an uh, interesting history in company heroes of course it was a company heroes one unit um, but it was never as powerful as this, I swear to God. It was the Luftwaffe battle group for Panzer Elite. And uh, I don't remember it being quite this menacing. Pioneer dead, no, by the way. Pretty oh. Oh, oh, my what saying, there. No, it was always, um, it was just an anti-infantry vehicle. Uh, whereas here, it's pretty good soft AT, with, especially with the vet. So it just, 
I mean, it's why you can spam them is because, you know, the natural, their natural predator, the Chaffee, actually can kind of struggle once there's two or three and they've all popped that bed of early. Speaking of Chaffee, where the hell is it? I think he's going to just rely on AT guns. You know, you drop the first one. Oh, we got it second. off. We got the anti-tank grenade off there with a wombo combo with the AT gun from the north of the picture there. And uh, killed the 2 to one at least. It's important. He's got to get kills here. Um, he's behind on map control. He's behind on tech. Although, that, again, that, that may be by design, uh, being behind on tech. But mm. I feel like over the course of the game, I'm going to look. I suspect he's had less fuel. I mean, the, the US player that manages to get Hellcats and Bulldozers out is doing pretty well against the Luftwaffe build in my... Oh, no, he's not against Luftwaffe Breakthrough, isn't it? Oh, scratch mm. that. Well, uh, to be I fair, mean, yeah. A Hellcats and, and Bulldozer build, I actually think, is optimal US. I've been, yeah. like, trying to theory craft in my own mind what I think the tournament players are going to end up at if it just stays on this patch. And do you, do you know what my, my conclusions are? I may be wrong here, by the way. It's one Jeep, three rifles, Captain, M8, Chaffee, uh, Hellcats, two Hellcats, then Bulldozer Sherman. Uh, obviously, depending on map, but let's, let's just say it's Twin Beaches or Road to Tunis. I kind of got a feeling. Nice wipe on the MG42 here. Can he get away with it? He's going to try. The Grenadiers need to do something. Where's the grenade, Sat? Does he not have... Did he already use them? I was, wow, I'm so surprised to not see grenades there. He definitely could have assault grenaded. Maybe he figured it's going to get picked up anyway. There's all this other infantry here. but the oh, How much munitions in, is so. this? Oh, two verbals coming. That'll change things. This game is heating up. Theory crafting can be put in the bin for a while. He's wiped the AT gun. He's going to drop another one, but the pioneers could steal it. Yes, they could. The airborne are now hunting for the verbals. This, this other AT gun could just... Where do you drop it? Is it in the base? Oh, it might be far back. I was worried it was just going to also get ran over. It still could. I mean... Four seconds left on Blitzkrieg. He could probably just drive up to this other AT gun and wipe it too. Yeah, he and could. He could finish the game right here, right now. He's planting smoke as well. He's going to get around the side of it. But he has got the reinforcement should he get decrewed. Wow. I am so surprised to see Havoc back off here. He could have just sat on the other AT gun um, and, and driven away through the base. I there's a nice juicy 18 aid. Will two? Will another one finish off this verbal here? That'll be close, you know. Ooh, but yeah. Slither, sliver of health remaining. Looks like Theo wants to maybe hang around through another one, but I think this, this rifle squad's yeah. going to have to go home. We've all been there. And we've all died because of it. But that one game where you just happen to get it off, you know, the like one HP, one man AT grenade to kill a tank, it makes it all worthwhile, right? Oh, yeah. It's definitely worth all of the other times where I lost the squad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the 7,000 games I've lost. I once did it to a King Tiger in Code 2. It was like the last conscript for the last 18 aid, the last possible second. It was so satisfying. Seeing but, the uh, Insta Vet 3 feels really good when that happens too. Ooh, in Co 1, yeah, getting the Insta Vet 3 on a Tiger Kill. By the way, we've got the Airborne hunting the Verbals here. So, yeah, what do you feel about my idea? Ooh, another 18 aid, possibly. I really don't get a chance to make my point about my theory crafting yeah. there, do I? I'm never going to get that point off. This is where, by the way, you know, I think, I think Sprint is something that people go back and forth on for the Rifle Vet, but can be really good. Um, we've seen a couple of points now where if he had sprint, he might have picked up a goat. So oh, the there's the AT gun coming in clutch. Will the airborne survive? He could just do that. No, he doesn't. Verbal stays the duration. Gets the wipe and drops the bazooka. That's a big deal. That's a really big deal, especially if this bazooka gets snatched. Because now, he, he's, I almost feel like he has to replace that. Because just AT guns is not enough safety against him. Warbles with Blitzkrieg pushing in. Like, you have to have the handheld AT. Like, that's part of this build, you know, to not mm. to not die. I have to say, though, if you look at the population cap, I think we may have we're missed uh, a squad wipe for Havoc at some point because he's certainly low on infantry um, compared yeah. to where he was. He's at 42 pop cap and Theo's at 53. Um, he has got another Verbal Vin um, getting ready to push in again now. But, uh, yeah, two, two piles went down, I think, and then the MG exchanged hands, so I think of that's course. why we're seeing the big, big discrepancy here. That's it, yep. But you're banged on. So, but yeah, man, I feel like 
we, we went from Havoc maybe being one or two different right clicks away from closing the game to now Theo in a dominant position. I mean, taking back the hill is going to be hard against the uh, double AT gun. And he doesn't have much imp, so he has to rely on just the Werbles, you know, to do all the heavy lifting. But, mm. you know, he was kind I'm of trying to think why he didn't push like in that. with those two Verbals in the base when he did. Maybe he wasn't sure where the rifles were up with the AT grenades, perhaps, and then they were behind him all the while. Uh, I can see yeah. why he didn't make the call, but I, I think on most players would have made the call, I feel. There was the AT gun behind him that he wasn't able to, to pick up or remove, and so you could definitely say that it was reasonable to expect that those rifles might have picked that up and then he would have been sort of hemmed in, but I think he could have just driven through the base, probably. Easy to say, though, you know, from the Fog of War off perspective. Yeah, exactly. We're sour on the all-seeing eye at the moment, and it's very easy to see the little hobbits and their trials and tribulations. Right, it's a three-verbal attack coming in. We need these AT guns on point. We've got the bazookas there, and that's, that's all we've got. He did replace. I like the choice to replace the paratrooper. I think that's 100% the right call. Yeah, I'm, it I'm really surprised work. to see no... Um, no officer quarters for the Luftwaffe building. Uh, you know, three Werbels and a Jaeger. I think getting that Vet 1 is a big deal. Oh, it's huge. Not to mention that, like, you know, once, you, once you've gotten Vet 1 on some of the Werbels, you've, like, essentially wasted that, that Vet if you do buy it, you know, because you can't ever get it back. So the earlier you get it, the better. And you need that white phosphorus to abuse these units to their fullest. <laughs> Tank Depot coming out for Theo. I'm predicting Hellcats. He's pretty much there on the fuel. Needs to get to 90, of course. He will have it by the time the building's ready. And then it's all about manpower. And, you know, Hellcats could have uh, some good good times on the beach against these, ver against these verbals. Yeah, very little AT. Just the Zook and the, the Shrek. Okay, so... Real quick, while there's no no clear fighting, yes, I think the comp you talked about is is probably the optimal theory crafted comp, but but I would say I think a lot of the times Armor BG wants to just stay on tier three and spam, yeah. spam M8, spam Chaffee, and so arguably that's the that's the optimal thing is to just kill your opponent with M8. But assuming the game goes even, you know, and both players end up finding space to tech up, then yeah, I think those are Hellcat is is, is where it's at. Yeah, definitely. And I just predict like the highest level players can survive the Greyhound Shaffy spam. Um, so I'm just expecting maybe that's the Orange Pest build for the Grand Final, perhaps. Yeah, we definitely could see it. If people find ways to, to survive that early game against the uh, the T3, T3 spam, then yeah, we could definitely see um, see some Dozers, see some Hellcats, which would be great. You know, I, I miss seeing um, multiple tiers being built. <laughs> it doesn't happen often enough. Yeah, I agree. And we're just all waiting for this 1.5 patch. And hopefully it's got some juicy patch notes to mitigate the cheese. I'm sending relic my energy. We have the uh, Command Panzer, Panzer IV coming out. What? Does that mean no tiger now? It means no tiger. Oh, okay. I know, kind of sad. But it makes sense. I mean, you know, I, I feel like Havoc's on the back foot here, so waiting for the tiger, probably not ideal. Yeah, no, having a tiger's never the ideal, unfortunately. Tigers are woefully underpowered. They've got paper armor. Loads of health. It's true, and especially paper against armor. Oh, yeah. It's a terrible yeah, idea. Really hard to use. Speaking of which, we will have our first Hellcat soon. I'm also starting to look at the munitions count for Theo, so he will have. Uh, he's got the carpet bombing run. What? Oh, here come the Verbals. There's four of them. Sorry, it's three Verbals with the Panzer for Command Tech. They've gotten past the AT guns now. The Bazookas are doing well, though. I have to say, one Verbal hits the dust just as the Hellcat rolls in. Oh, this could go so badly for Havoc. Yeah, I think he's going to get cleaned up here. I mean, where's the AT? In base is the Shrek. So it's just the Zook squad to scare off this Hellcat. I, I don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, especially with the rifles, you know, just destroying that bazooka squad. Oh, yeah. Hellcats like lose... Pac-Man with a big pill right now. Wacka, wacka, wacka. And all these ghosts can't get back to home quick enough. Yeah, he needed to get the Shrek moving out of base faster. Um, he's not backing off with the uh, vehicles, I'm surprised. This Hellcat could chase him down. You know, I think he's really playing with fire here. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure that Hellcat should just go in now. It's got Vet 1. 
can um, zoom into there. Is it fearful of mines, perhaps? Yeah. Yep. I mean, that you have to respect um, the mines. Um, Guard that line and spray whatever something, uh, you know, Orange Past always gets mad at people on his stream when they don't respect his mines that aren't there. Because in his mind, you know, good players will always lay mines, so you should always assume there's mines there. <laughs> we're, see we're seeing Theo make that make that true here. He's not going in even though there are no mines. Really, not a lot of mines um, in this game. You know, for two high-level players, we've seen very few, you know, spending the muni elsewhere. What do you think of the general standard of play right now, Daniel? What do you think of it? Like, Orange Pest is very disdainful. There's a lot of... There's a few players are disdainful at the moment. They think, like... There's, a, there's so many gears the players can go through. There's so many levels to the ceiling that they're not even getting to. Uh, is that kind of true, or what are we seeing? Kind of. I would say, yes, that's true. Like, are people playing optimally? No. Are people playing more optimally than they were at this point in Co. 1 and Co. 2? I think, yeah. I mean, Coming to Heroes is a complex game. I don't think it's solved by any stretch, although, the, you know, some parts of this meta might be. Uh, and I think that considering how young the game is and frankly, how little competitiveness there is on the auto match ladder. I think people are, are, are pretty good. I don't think people mm. are nearly as bad as they were, whatever, a year into Code 2. Oh, and my. Do you remember, as bad as they were. Do you remember I mean, the early Code 1, 1 games? Jesus Christ. Nystrom, Arhenian, Arhenian rather. Those Hall of Fame replays are trash in the early days of Company yes. Heroes 1. People, That's so people, bad. People thought thugs were OP until they learned that circle strafing existed. Like They didn't even know about circle strafing. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that people are overly harsh about the level of play. I think Yeah. I think people are better than people like to say. I think everybody has rose colored glasses for the past and you know when, when I see Orange Pest play his best, when I see people like Charlotte or Havoc or really any of the top players play their best, I think they're very good. And I think they would absolutely destroy any of the top players from, you know, back in the day. And you th you're right about Code 2 as well. That took ages to warm up, really. It, was, it wasn't until, like, 2015-16 we started to go through those levels. So I think, yep, we're right. There are many levels, and there's many uh, levels to the s skill floors and ceilings, whatever you want to call it, this building of skill. But I, think, I mean, yeah. I won multiple Code 2 tournaments, which sort of says all you need to say about the overall <laughs> level of play in early Code 2. Dude, I, enlighten me. I can't remember you on my tournament spreadsheet. Which illustrious tournaments did you win? No, no, no illustrious ones. I won the a North America only 1v1 tournament. Oh! Because I think I was the only good North America player. <laughs> <laughs> Dude! Now, you, yeah. now you're speaking my language. You probably beat uh, legends such as Space Hamster. Or, um... I think I did beat Space Hamster. The, in the, the finals was me versus Complexity, a.k.a. Dude. Sexy Lexi, Why? the PE player from Co. 1. Oh, my God, I remember Sexy Lexi. Um, yes, indeed. So... It, it, it really is depressing that my... I'm probably the only person on the planet with an encyclopedic knowledge of tournaments from Company of Heroes, so I kind of knew your opponents without knowing your opponents. That's really bad. Yeah. Uh, like, what have I done with my neurons? I could have learned another language or something. I don't know. Maybe an instrument. You're giving back to the community with that, that knowledge, so don't, don't denigrate yeah. it too much. Yeah, someone's got to know this stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I've just so... got... Um, to get back to the game a little bit here... He's, he's, he's stacking the AT now with, with two Shreks. Um, I feel like he's going to need a Martyr or something, though, against the uh, you know, against the, uh, the 105. Well, the it's going to be hard on the Shreks. lighthouse there. That was so cool. The cladding on the outside of the lighthouse just got stripped away. Oh, we've now got the Bulldozer. So it is a Bulldozer Hellcat build. Theo is a very slow and steady player, but he seems to be strang strangling the life out of Havoc now. It's an 80 pop cap army versus 56. Yeah, this this becomes... If you're not already ahead from from spamming orbs and, and tracks, pretty impenetrable, I find. Um, because you kind of need the indirect to deal with the AT gun wall. You know, you can kind of use Jaeger smoke, but not really. But if you're behind, you can't tech to tier 3. And so you just sort of slowly bleed out. You know, your Shreks just bleed you manpower, and, you know, you can try to merge slave. But, you know, I, I, my money's on Theo at this point. Oh, yeah. I think he's in a dominant position. And I, don't, I don't see what Havoc does here to get out of this. I think, you know, he had his window with the Wurbles, and that, it's kind of closed now. Yeah. He had his chance, and we're now just waiting for game three. I mean, I'm sure that uh, Havoc obviously has a VP um, lead, so he'll have selection for game three.
Yeah, I'm a little nervous. We're just gonna we're gonna see Theo crumble to double Jeep again. <laughs> I hope that does. I hope I hope he's got something ready for that because it's not. EG uh, Eliminator, right? They can play whatever they want. Whenever it they is want. not Battle Group Eliminator. I'm not sure that UMB and uh, Canamix are aware of that. They seem to have uh, organized this tournament. We're all glad they are with a lot of enthusiasm. They've spent their own money, by the way, so credit to them. But without any knowledge of any prior tournaments, and that's what makes it exciting. Anything could happen in this tourney. <laughs> we don't have Battle Group Terminator. We didn't have proper seeding. It's uh, got a bit of chaos about it, hasn't it? Yeah, I don't mind that, honestly. And I think the, you know, the, the, the seeding definitely will lead to some um, unfortunate losers brackets matchups, but it does mean we get to see some uh, some better matches in the first few rounds, whereas, you know, usually the first few rounds are kind of not even cast-worthy. So sure. I do like that there's there's fun matches already in round two. Yeah, and with double limb, you do have that, uh, that room for that. We're going to get a second bulldozer, by the way. It's an interesting <laughs> challenge for Havoc. He really is up against it now. Yeah, it's almost just like there's not even any point in taking these fights. I mean, you got to stay on the map, obviously, but he's just just continuing to bleed. He's got tier four up and built a Stastrupen, which is not really what you need against the bulldozers. I mean, he doesn't have fuel for anything else from tier four, so. But you know, I would have liked to have just seen a martyr or something instead. At this point, yeah, I don't know. This, this, I don't know what tier four does. Speaking for of you. not worth casting, this this game is now for my money not worth casting unless Theodosios makes a calamitous series of, of, of you know, mi of miss time, terrible errors, just something ridiculous. I don't know. It's not going to happen. He's so slow and steady, though. I would bet my mortgage on Theo winning this game. It's, uh... Theo's a careful player. I like I like Theo's play style. It's, um, you know, I, I think we've seen a lot of success from in tournaments from aggressive players, and I think there's a reason for that. Uh, I think it's, it's generally the best way to play. But I love seeing a slow and steady player like like it's my preference for how to play. I've tried to learn to be more aggressive, but I like I like seeing it. I think it's a it's not maybe the most exciting style to watch, but it's I find it satisfying. Yep, it's can be very satisfying. See, coming here as two was was very like that. We had some very slow and steady games to put it that way, like Nagano versus Jove on Crossing of the Woods for an hour, that kind of thing. I could send you some replays, especially if you need some ASMR. You that know, is a map I do not miss, especially in <laughs> 2v2s. No. It was terrible. 2v2s for that map was like two separate 1v1s, and then a mad scramble for the finish with like Elephant versus ISU 152 every single Yeah, I was going to say, by mad scramble, you mean ISU versus Elephant across yeah. the middle bridge for 45 minutes. 45 minutes, and then a mad scramble for VP. Yeah, exactly. Who could you know, attack ground through the fog with their long range tank destroy the most? Okay, we do have the Martyr now, finally. Um, and I like what Havoc's doing. I think, you know, if he's going to stay in this game, he's going to have to play maybe, like, can't be through the beach and, and, and try to grab, hold two VPs. I mean, VPs tick fast. They're, they're both sub-200. Like, if you can just hold the two beach VPs, you know, theoretically, it's Yeah. Theoretically. Theor theoretically. Theor everything's theoretical here, but... Uh... Yeah, we like maybe he's also theory crafting himself. Maybe Havoc's just challenging himself. He's up against a really decent player. He wants to see if he can break out of this. He's challenging himself. Why not? You know, we all know there's big events that are completely unannounced, but, you know, I've kind of had to half announce them so people keep training and take everything seriously as well, which certainly helps when you've got the idea of big cash prize pools on the horizon. Um, so, yeah, it's just you need to be taking things seriously right now. Absolutely, yeah. Because you know, it's all it all it's all practice. It all counts. I think turning experiment experience is so valuable. Um, I know for myself, I found that like you know, I don't play as well in tournaments as I do in auto match or whatever. Because you, know, you don't don't practice being in that setting. I think it can be stressful, or you know, just, you know everyone's going to watch you. Yeah. Um, oh, so I think tournaments like this are, are great. I, I, again, I think you're right in shouting out the organizers. Ooh, looks like uh, getting the tap out here. Yeah, tapped out, or well, the referee G -G. called it one of those. Now, I've started to say tap out rather than throw in the towel because it's the manager in boxing that throws in the towel and it's the combatant in MMA that taps out. So it makes so much more sense to say tap out. Um, yeah. So I'm glad you're joining me on that. You got it. But yes, uh, it was a very good game, Theo. Sorry we stopped casting it towards the end, but you were very clearly winning. Um, we are now going to go over to game three, of course, because I think Daniel's got some stuff to do, so we might as well get this series done. 
it is true. I <laughs> Twister's wondering why I'm doing this instead of playing playing twos with him. I told him I was busy today, but uh, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't, couldn't turn down the opportunity to uh, to cast these games. I was excited about this th series actually. This is one of the ones I was um, looking forward to because I thought it would be. I, I think um, I have played to played against both these guys on the ladder, and I think they're pretty uh, pretty close skill wise. I mean, Theo's got a lot more tournament experience, but Havoc has a lot more experience, and so. I think we're seeing that here, but both these guys putting up a good fight. In, in Co3, certainly. I don't know what Havoc's... I think he was kind of like uh, job hunting for a while. And by job hunting, I mean spamming all too much games. Um, <laughs> and it certainly showed because he improved a hell of a lot. He's still got a way to go in order to become like a true elite tawny contender, but he's bloody improving all the time. Um, so credit to him. Yeah, I think we'll see Havoc um, continue to be in tournaments and continue to do well. Uh, if he can avoid... Uh, Copium overdose, which I think is a real danger when you play as many auto match games as, <laughs> as, as, as you know as he has. Oh, the Swedish uh, government have had Alper, one of their f strongest players, on like a copium um, rehab program because that guy burnt <laughs> out hard. He was one of the biggest advocates for Co three, and then he became like um, really, really, you know, pay it was cringe inducing watching him play because he clearly wasn't enjoying it, kind of thing. But um, yeah. glad to see he's back on the Copium bandwagon, hopefully, and he's going to be joining us for tournaments to come. Uh, I've got some replays of his for later, so that could be interesting. Um, I don't actually know who wins, but I know that I've got the replays, so we'll see what happens there. And yeah, let's um, let's enjoy game three. We know Havoc's going to win because he's got USF, so if you're just joining us, that's going to be fun. I don't know that for certain. These are blind replays for me, but uh, I mean, let's face it, he's got US, so it's it's all downhill from here for Theo. But um, all right, guys, we're going to get to five seconds. And we're on pausing in three, two, one. On pause. Let's go, Daniel. Seven, eight, nine. We're good. Oh, we're more oh. than good, my friend. And oh. here come the Jeeps. He's going to build the barracks. He's going to auto-build it, not even this kind is, of cast it out into his base. This is He's... unacceptable from a player of Havoc's caliber um, because the travel time for the engineers is once, but the travel time for the Jeeps is twice plus all your rifles. So... Is this intentional, though? Is he... Oh, man. I wonder if this is, like, on purpose because he's sending the first Jeep north that he's not building the, it Yeah. No. There's no... It, the first building at least has to be, like, a forward headquarters, in my opinion. The amount yeah, of travel... I, the amount of reinforcement... Uh, like, you can put your guys behind heavy cover to defend your cutoff, and you can have them reinforcing. It's so yeah. OP. It's it's so good. And, and also, like, if you keep auto-building throughout the game, eventually you start blocking your own retreats. It's like, mm -hmm. one of the things I look out for players is, do they actually care? Do they respect their opponents? Are they endeavoring to be as good as they mechanically possibly can be from an intelligent point of view? And if they're not making a forward headquarters with their first building, I'm like, ah, they're not even taking this seriously, are they? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm shocked. This is going to bother me all day. <laughs> I'm glad you're with me building on that his one, barracks. Yeah, I'm glad you're with me. It's really an OCD of mine. Um, yeah. I've got some more controversial opinions, which I know are just mine, like about turning camera. I know that's just me, and I know no one's having to start doing it. But not oh, forward headquartering is uh, unacceptable. I, I will never turn the camera because sometimes some build they design the maps in such a way that like you can see around the buildings intentionally, True. and so you, you hurt that. But otherwise, you see more of your opponent um, when you turn the camera. So. As someone oh, yeah. who hates it and hates seeing it, I will still defend it as optimal play to turn the It game. is optimal 100%. play, but it's like it's not as big of a, an advantage as, for example, using tech map, for example. Like, I'm talking, I, I explain it's like a 2 or 3% uh, improvement. For some maps where you're north and it's a north south map, it's actually more than that. I would say it's like a 7% improvement because you're literally spending all of the game backing your viewfinder ass. If you don't know what we're on about, by the way, the viewfinder is a third of the size at the bottom as it is at the top. So you're going to want to face the top towards your opponent. That's what the player Jove did back in 2015 when he invented facing the enemy. I'm sure people did it before him, but I, 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 I say Jove's the first guy. Okay, so crucial fight here on this fuel. Um, the Coastal's got a really lucky volley off on approach. Mm -hmm. And this Jeep Pioneers now has to got leave. Them, you know? I gotta say, I think Havoc has misplayed this open. Um, 
so some of it was luck from the coastals getting good good shots off but when you go double jeep like this you need to dominate you need to win early and you do that by using both jeeps to, to push off units together and he has left the jeep separate which means that Theo has been able to hold... I mean, he's going to lose the field now, but he's managed to have a lot more territory than you would expect, I think, at this stage of the game against Double Jeep. Exactly. And I think he's going to survive. And I think... I'm, I'm happy to see this because, honestly, because it means that we're not going to see another seven-minute Greyhound winning the game, probably. Because <laughs> uh, I don't think... Probably. Uh, I mean, you say Could probably... You're just saying there's a possibility he's going to survive. Like, that's all we're saying it right now. But as Theo's gone for this coastal build, they, of course, do, you know, they do reasonably well on this map. They can get behind cover. They can do... They've got their plus 10 fuel still. And you're right to point that out as a vital engagement. If he loses that, it's not going to go well for him. But um, let's see what goes on from here. I also want to point out the 2-5 munis in the middle that Theo has had for a long time. Um, plus, he's got hold of his 16 still, so his media comes really good. And that's essential for, for fighting this armored strat because you need the Panzer Fusa, or Fusha and you need the, the Shreks. So I think he's got a much better plan here than in game one against this. Yeah. So some juicy mines laid down already. And he's kind of operating really well. Both Jeeps are stricken and going to be out of combat for a little while, waiting for auto reinforce if they've not already had it. One goes down. Oh, we got the one in the north. Bloody hell, I didn't see that. Nope, Coastal's just about got him with the last bullet. I expected Havoc to get away with that, so I moved my camera away. I was foolish to do so. Okay. I mean, usually, again, this is he's gotten some great rules with the uh, with the Coastal's against the Jeeps. I mean, you can you can have engagements where the Coastal's die without doing a, any damage to the Jeep, so he... Uh, Pray to the RNG gods before this game, clearly. <laughs> yeah, must have been one of the last bullets he had possible there. Okay, can he keep his plus 10 fuel here? Yes, he can. He gets out of base just in the nick of time. He's looking good. He's stacked 113 muni now. Um, he's going to be able to get all the AT he needs. Um, although this, it's it's going to need to be soon because this M8's coming. And it's it's going to build oh in God. 11 seconds. Dude, that's so early. I, I think, like, 5.30 is meant to be the fastest you can get. That was 5.25. Yeah, so Havoc's oh. built. Okay, so I, I criticized Havoc the way Havoc played this early game. If this M8 wins the game, I was wrong. Because, obviously, that was the idea, was not to not to kill them with the Jeeps, but to get the fuel with the Jeeps and then get yeah. get, get the M8 out as fast as possible. And it's going to hit before any AD is uh, even that on the horizon. That is insane. Really. That reminds me of Soviet industry circa 2013, uh, back in the day, T-70s in the first five minutes. I mean, this is five minutes and 27 seconds, but still bloody fast. Yeah, Panzer Schusa will come. Um, will it be in time? It's hard to say, see how much more damage this enemy can do. He responded well. I like him throwing the, throwing the, uh, the hint, you know, the AT grenade to uh, to take some HP off. It's a big deal, because um, it means now that the two to one can at least threaten the kill a lot more easily. Panzerbuska's going hunting. Does he have vision? It looks like he may do. Coastal certainly will have gotten him. That there you go. There's one shot in. Can he get this unwieldy beast to hunt the M8 and get? Oh, the he's gonna hit the shot? mine. Nice. Havoc's got to be, I would be mulling about that. You just would assume <laughs> if the Jeep was there that, you know, you, you would have hit that already so it's safe, but unlucky to path around that until he didn't. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was a nice pickup for Theo. It kind of puts him in a, not the lead because of how little territory he's had overall, especially with the cuts off recently being taken, but uh, a nice pickup all the same. Yeah, and and actually, you could you could make the argument that he is in the lead now because this build of Havocs has no heals, has only two rifles, with no vet on them because they haven't been fighting, and so now his mid game sucks because the MA didn't do anything, and Theo's now safe from the MA spam because he's going to get a Shrek, and so I, I like Theo's position better I think right now. I think the Warbone's going to come out, and if this second MA doesn't get something done, I, I think he's in trouble. Um, you could argue that he could just keep spamming tier three and overwhelm, but. DDL is going to come up and uh, make that a lot harder. 
And we, it's important to kind of state the imp the importance of map balance because uh, Panzer Booster on this map is a lot more powerful than on Twin Beaches, as an example. It's so much more open. It's got so much more opportunity to utilize stuff. It's like a mini modder on this map. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we do see the defensive line going up. Um, these coastals have been waiting, waiting all game for some heals, and they're kind of like getting it. Wow, that is a powerful spring of ability, isn't it? Yeah, and on this map, so this good. might be one of the most brutal ones because it lets you contest like top and mid VP, and your weapons teams can fight over the VP from the circle. I don't know if there's another map where you can so easily dominate like the most important spots. With yeah, I hope uh, we look back on this in three years' time, Daniel, and we laugh at these VODs. Like, we're like, ha, ah, do you remember when Relic made a, an impenetrable circle of healing and defensive aura? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Second Greyhound coming out. I'm really curious to see if we'll, if we'll get like a, an all-in. Because I think the, the sooner Havoc can, can do an all-in, the better, you know, because like yeah. Against DDL, once enough Shreks get stacked up, once the Warbow comes out, it gets hard to dive. But this is another window, you know, like with the, the Jaeger being chased back to base, where the only AT is the 2 2 1. So if mm. Havoc were to drive in right now and manage to avoid any mines, which I'm not sure if there are any. I have been looking for mines as we speak, sir, and I can't see any. I'm trying to figure out where his munitions have gone. Because as you rightly mentioned earlier, he did have a lot. So I'm wondering if this retreated Jaeger has been teching. No, it hasn't. Neither have the munitions for a Shrek quite yet. So this Greyhound push, as you rightly mentioned, is a very important moment for the game. Yeah, I hope he continues to commit here. I mean, he's chasing this MG. I I'd like to see him really try to hunt a unit down. Somebody in chat says, why I can't see results on Co3Stats.com because I got in touch with the maker of Co3Stats.com and removed your ability to spoil the cast you're watching. So you oh, have well me to thank done, for that. Oh, well done, Aid. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and I sometimes can't resist. I'll go see who won and then be mad at myself because I wanted to watch it blind, you know? So that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. That's so great. <laughs> I also have admin access now. <laughs> Very good. Can you make me rank one? Is that... Oh, uh, no, that's impossible. <laughs> Relic won't allow that. It said you're already too powerful. Okay. Okay, so he did Nice he did white, by the way. Yep. Yeah. He All did. Right. Thank you. What I wanted to see from Havoc. It's a big deal. You have to do that, I think, with this build. I think this build's all about momentum. You have to keep the momentum up. You have to keep the pressure up. You don't want that critical mass from Wehrmacht to build up around the, uh, the designated defensive line. So it's an important kill, even if it is just a coastal. Mm. Ah, that's 240 manpower you probably would have preferred to have had on the field. Yeah. Dead. A mine layer. Mm. Everything's a mine layer on this build, nearly. I'm surprised the Jaegers don't like shit mines. That many mines when you're playing against Coastal. Ooh, Don't there was a Shrek shot. Anything. There's the Panzer Busca. That's a dead Greyhound. Uh, nice. It's a big deal. Chipping away at these numbers matters a lot. A the, uh... Certainly does. It's um, very important. He's got the verbal coming out as well now, Theo has. He needs to keep this Jaeger yeah, alive, though. There you go. Get it back to base. Oh, I'll what a shot from the Greyhounds. Yeah. Ouch. Oh, they're dead. Oh the Greyhound <laughs> sniped it. That's here, heinous. He will get the shot. Oh, and another wipe. Oh, no. That is huge. Right. I am going to say that I think the Greyhounds may be overpowered. I know that's a hot take, but I'm just going to say it. I think they might be overpowered. I, I, you know, please don't crucify me in chat for saying I think... Really, it's the vet one spotter that's such a problem because the 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 vanilla greyhound is pretty underwhelming, but these vet one greyhounds with the spotter just don't miss sometimes. Yeah. When I see units down. sniping everything and just demolishing every on the field, the first thing I think is underwhelming. You're right there, Daniel. Well, okay. No, to I be fair, I don't I don't know the last time you've seen a vet zero greyhound. People don't build them, you know. When people yeah. Build them, they, go, uh, <laughs> they go armor. True. 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 <laughs> wow, that's a that's such a swing, man. All Theo had to do was play safe and hold on, and I, he just he's, he got excited. He killed that first M8 and overreached. Worth noting, still no heals from Havoc. He's uh, he's staying the course here. He's building another fresh rifle rather than 
feeling the ones he has, just uh, I think rightly recognizing that he needs to just continue to turn out tier three units and, and win that way. Mortar on its way for Theo. That's a good choice, but he's really lacking an infantry army, and uh, it's amazing to me he still has two victory points. I think that's what you were talking about earlier about this uh, defensive ring of survival. It allows you to uh, control two victory points on this map. Well, it did, obviously. You know, Navik's going to take them away now, but. I think he's going to have a hard time holding mid for the next few minutes. Um, he's bleeding so much now. He keeps going stationary as well. He's attacking, move, uh, moving, or hitting halt. And it means his his shots just will not miss. That Piney's dead. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Look at oh that. God. He's hitting halt a lot, I think. And I actually pointed that out on his stream. I was like, why don't you hit halt more to get better accuracy? And I'm seeing it. I'm very happy about that. But here comes the Marder. Come on, Marder, get Theo back in this game. There's another Greyhound down. It's not going to be enough, though. I mean, Havex about to secure, at least for a little while, this top fuel, I think. And uh, he's going to be able to just keep making more there. It's not that expensive to replace. 210, no. 210 manpower, 40 fuel. Very affordable unit. Yeah, and that's part of the problem. I mean, I just think these spammables, these cheesables, just need to be a little bit more expensive. I'm talking Shafi to 60. Um, I'm talking ground to 45 instead of 40. You know, just just tiny economy adjustments to the fuel uh, costs of some of these units will work wonders, I believe. Yeah, although then you make then you make non-armored tier three pretty pretty bad. Uh, you, you can make an argument, I think, that it's it's an issue with the battle group more than the the yeah, tier true. itself. Yeah, the fast deploy and the vet one being at zero ZP uh, CP. Uh, really doesn't help. Maybe they just change that first and then go from there. I just, I was also thinking of just so many spammable units in this game. I just, I don't know, maybe just fight, increasing the cost slightly. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, you have to do something. I, I've always said that I think they need to just make the higher tier units more effective against the lower tier units and vice versa. Like, Chaffees are too good against Panzer IVs, so oh, that's, yeah. that's why teching is bad. It's not because... Panzer IVs are bad, it's because it's expensive to get to, and then the Chaffees destroy it. But don't forget that the Chaffee has a very small target size as well, so one of the problems with it is things miss against it when it's on the move. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just so hard to cap against these M8s. Oh. <gasps> he's, he's, he's aiming the... Uh, what's the bloody ability called on the mortar? Aiming sights? Sighting! What? Come on, help me out here. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna look. It's a sight main gun. Oh, that's it. He's sighting the main gun. Here come the Greyhounds. So can he sight the main gun enough? Oh, no. They've gotten past him. They're going round him. The Verbal needs to catch up now. The mod is still in sight main gun loaded. You can't get out of it. And, uh, yep. There it goes. Yeah. It's down. Warble not targeting the M8. It's targeting the uh, engineer in the building. I kind of think that's a misclick. Very much so. Where were the Jaegers, by the way? Uh, one south, big, too far yeah, south. that's 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 vital. One of the biggest things you can do as motor pool spam US is you time it for when the Jaegers aren't home, and mm -hmm. then as soon as those Jaegers aren't home, home you come knocking. Yeah, Havoc's done a great job this game of picking his moments with these M8s, and it's, it's making a big difference. He's actually going for an M1 AT gun now. It's an interesting choice, and it's not a bad one. In. Yeah, I mean, there are two Shreks and a Martyr, so I, I guess he's thinking, you know, down to two M8s, maybe the dives won't work anymore, but this is where most players would just start spamming Chaffees instead <laughs> to, to, to kill the Martyr, so I don't know. <laughs> it's the, the double Shreks. I mean, he can't always rely on them not being in the house. Yeah. I actually wouldn't hate seeing uh, bars at this point because, hmm? you know, the Jaegers don't have a lot of vet. There's very little imp, you know, so it's like... With just the one Werble, I think once you have the bars, you know, one rifle on the flank demands the Werble shows up to fight Dude, it. Dude, so. you, you literally are 100% right. Um, as I say, I've been th theory crafting with top level players to try and figure out the exact best uh, US build and timing and stuff. And yeah, bars uh, are what you're going to want to go, in my opinion. I think that was optimal. If you, if you just take a step back from your spam and it's not quite working, bars is usually the next call, in my opinion. I mean, spam works is to be fair. You know, it's often it's often okay to get just one more M8, but 
I think, you know, if, if you're already pretty close to being able to win the infantry battle, you know, overall, then the bars are, it will always push you over the, the edge there. Oh, they're great. Especially with munition surplus. It doesn't take too much to get it. And uh, the power spike you get from having, you know, bars on every squad, double bars on every squad, uh, all of a sudden, against the Jaeger Shreks, they'll be completely zoned out. Completely. Yeah. We can see, though, again, the DDL allowing, um, really keeping the in this game, because... It's just letting everything heal, stay on the field. The martyr allows allows the Shreks to kind of defend the martyr more effectively. Although once again, he's he's going to end up with no Shreks on the field, and I think that's another window here. Um, we might, might might see a push from Havoc. I'll tell you what, Havoc's double AT gun build's going to look genius when he takes out these martyrs in a second. Yeah. Then again, I like Theo's Theo positioning on the martyrs. Is... Sorry, Theo himself is backed up to Panzer Grenadier Company. He's getting a pack 40. So both players recognizing this map is the land of the pack. I think that's a flag. Is it really? Is he not back -tacked? Oh, no, he's not. My bad. Sorry, my bad. Very difficult. Okay, that's why you, so. have the, why you have the expert player in here. <laughs> you can uh, recognize the shield icon. I mean, I probably should have thought it. But I'm, now I'm thinking, why is he doing that? I was getting, getting excited because I thought... Uh, I've seen a lot of players start to back tech for pack 40s this tournament. Uh, I've started yeah, to begin to expect to it. I think the flag makes sense here because he, he's losing the infantry battle and um, he's afraid to make more warbles against the double AT gun, probably. So the flak is a way to, like, you can put it in the DDL and it can it can defend the DT forever. Shaffy so. getting some big shots, but so is the mod as Shrek's coming in as well. Shaffy's just going to have to do a whistle stop tour and get out of there. Meanwhile, we've got a captain probing, we've got AT guns looking to come in. He's all up against Theo right now. They have 200 points remaining. Yeah, Theo definitely in a scary position, but I think I'm not saying he's gonna he, he's in a good position to win, but he's he's getting there. He's getting all the tools. I mean, two martyrs with two Shreks. If the martyrs are separated, like he's been keeping them, and they both have the main gun sighted, I don't know that you can dive that. Like you have to creep the AT guns up, but I don't know that you can creep the AT guns up against the Flak 30 in DDL. So. It's going to be tough to break this. I don't know if we'll have to see some indirect fire or if he's just going to have to play wide enough to sort of pull Theo apart. Is this not... Um, has he got double Shreks on his Jaegers there? Did he get that because a Jaeger died? or? Oh, or did he abuse the bug? No, I think I think he was probably... I think if you pick one up, it doesn't remove the ability to upgrade it. Oh, so yeah. So he okay. probably picked it up and then... And then, and then also upgraded it afterwards. Yeah, Demare confirms in chat he's remembered that he picked one up mini and mid VP. Sorry, I'm so scared of people abusing the bug at the moment. Havoc, uh, uh, we got to look at Havoc's uh, blob here and <laughs> hit against the one MG. Actually managed to get behind green cover, but that was... Uh, MG got away, yeah. Funny moment there. I think not expecting the MG to be so far up hadn't, uh, hadn't split up his troops like maybe he should have. Okay, but here's what I was talking about with the Flak 30. It can, it can be just in the range of the DDL, and it's super hard to uh, keep the VP. Although he's not, he's not a tech ground. So, so. <laughs> it's going to make me look stupid. Well, it takes a lot to do that. We've got seven man coastals against Bars in the Casbah. I haven't seen any fighting down south for a while. That's the, the problem with designated defensive line. It makes the game so linear focused on that one area. Defend our victory point. We're losing it. The Jeep, by the way, is in reconnaissance mode. That's what you're seeing there. It's kind of like um, reconnaissance uh, tractor. It's just picking up on all of these units. Well, that's cool to see. Don't see that very much in uh, 1v1s, I think. Yeah, it makes no sense as to why either the Jeep commander. And I see that after, I mean, this 1.5 patch, hopefully double Jeep uh, dies a death by that point. I'm, I'm expecting to see more of Jeep commander by that point. Yeah, I think one Jeep is still really good. Even without armor, it can be valuable. You know, you can, you can get that one in it relatively quickly. And, uh, and like you say, this is a really, really strong ability on a lot of maps. Oh, that's a strong ability as well. Double Shreks annihilate the Jeep commander. Bye-bye. We got the officer finally. Um, I actually feel like this could have came out sooner. Um, I forgot about it though, honestly. I guess so did uh, so did Theo. But it's gonna make those AT guns pretty hard to use if you can get close enough. We do, of course, have the bars now. It's gonna have to get close enough to the AT guns. 
don't think we have any of the upgrades yet from uh, Havoc from the uh, ISC. Yeah, it looks like zero. Not abusing the, the demos, not abusing advanced logistics. Probably just was well, expected demos to, abandoned to, to this tournament game. event, aren't they? Demos abandoned. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. That's good, honestly. Yeah. I was not looking forward to seeing that abused. No. Yeah. They, they're kind of un... Uh, un uh, you can't sweep them very easily, can you, so... No. No, you cannot. Man, I'm like, I'm getting worried for Havoc now. I'm not sure how he breaks this um, now that the wizards arrived with the flak backing it up. It's like... This is a tough nut to crack with DDL. It's a spicy game, this one, but the problem for Theo is his victory point counts at 1-1-3. And awfully low. And lovely. Here we go, we got the mortar. Yeah, it's pit, rather. Not a bad option. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's... I was I was hoping Hyvik would get some indirect fire. It's definitely what he needs here. Wizard's artillery was forced away before it could really affect the mortar pit. Okay, a, a completely new question here. How do you actually get the mortar pit? Yeah, it's definitely buildable. It's, it's so it's it's nice to save the manpower, um, especially if you don't have logistics. You know, it's much cheaper than getting a mortar, and it actually is, is better against its counter, the Nebel Weffer, if you get it to vet. So usually you like to get it earlier because that way you can get it to vet pretty quick. But it vets up fast, and we can see it's already. A, you know, a third of the way to vet one. Uh, it vets it really quickly, and once it's vet three, it can survive a Neville Barrage, and so, whereas the regular Mortar can't. So, I actually really like the move. I think, I think it's going to be one of those things we see more and more uh, yeah. as, as people realize how strong it is. This map, it's, it's harder to use. It's only my second ever game I've cast with one in. Um, oh, really? Wow. It's, yeah. Uh, I think it's I getting more, more, more and more. crap out of me with the Mortar Pit on uh, Twin Beaches with the... Oh, uh, wow. With, yeah, because there's a few spots like on Tun Beaches where you're playing south, you can put it behind the hedges, and it's uh, it's really hard to get to, and it does a lot of damage. It seems better than the regular mortar. I don't know if that's just me or if it, if it really. <laughs> I think it fires faster. Hopefully, its range isn't as big because it would be really foolish if it was just better. I suppose you can't move it. It's the only thing it doesn't have going for it. Oh. Look at it. They're doing work now. He's got two of them. So the range starts really small, and then it, it gets really big at that three. Oh, wow. Okay. Fair enough. And there's the wizard getting some good shots in. We've got a scout dying. Verbalvin looking for a shot from the north. Those 18 guns need to get out of there. Jaegers, meanwhile, up against the Shafi. Shafi going in against the Verbal. Here comes the Marder. But the Marder Ooh. vitally misses its shot. That is brutal look for Theo. Can he get the kill? Yes, he can at least. So I wonder, I'm not sure who came out on top there. So it was... Um... Lost the Werble versus a Scout and a Chaffee, mm. right? Yeah. It's pretty pretty even, I don't know. I mean, Theo's pretty low on anti-imp, so I guess you could argue that better to have the Werble than to kill a Chaffee, but... Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready for these mortar pits to carry the game. similar costs, so it's, it's not the end of the world. His fuel, he could replace it if he wants it, so, you know, um, let's see. One thing Thea really needs to do, by the way, and this is like, this is not debate, this is not theory craft. He needs to stop planting a lot more mines whenever he gets the chance with the coastals. Um, 50 muni better. Yeah. I'd like to see coastal, him abuse the um, designated RD Overwatch. Oh, uh, is this a rat? What's he doing here? He's, he's pushed in with the rifle, sprinted in, actually. I wonder what he was trying to scout for. Maybe looking to finish off that low Jaeger? That's the only thing I can think of. Um, mm. But yeah, if Theo can get a bunker behind the building in mid, he's got a bunch of mini bank, and he can really abuse the designated artillery overwatch to, to, to you know chase Havoc out of mid completely. That's a good um, shout. That would be interesting. Um, Theo's just started building something, or he's just reinforced... Okay, he's reinforced everything. Ah, and Stotts Trooper, there you go. That's what he's built. I wondered where his manpower had gone. Mm, there's Man, your I'd rather see bunker spam. Honestly, than Stoss at this point. Oh, poor Stoss. Just because they're <laughs> elite Nazi soldiers doesn't mean you can't feel sorry for them. You just said something really mean. You'd rather see a bunker than Stoss trooping. Yeah, I think he's got the muni banked. I think he could really be, you know, he could get a repair bunker. He could abuse the registered RD. He could use it to control mid better. Um, we'll see. Maybe he'll make me eat my words. You know, I mean, the Stoss in the DDL are going to be a menace, but they're going to have to step out of it to fight 
around the VP, and these these vetted rifles are gonna yeah are gonna be scary, I think. And then the double mortar pit too. I'm just worried he's just gonna bleed because of these. And they're not gonna do enough. Well, Stosser has been getting their first wipe, first action on the field, just to make Daniel eat his words. Here it comes. There you go. <laughs> But uh, by the way, a uh, big shout out to Theo. He's been listening to the cast, even though he probably played this game earlier today. He's planted loads of mines since we called him out on his munitions. Yeah, the north's kind of covered now. And south actually has some good mines too. Oh yeah. Wow, bloody hell, those rifles are going to be a free if they... Mortar pit's already at bit two. Second one's at bet one already. Wow, these bloody mortar pits have been a right nightmare. They go right yeah, you can't line. cap against double mortar pit. Like it's, I think it's, I don't think it's like physically possible what for the, a Jaeger squad. They to have air burst. They oh, gave yeah. a mortar pit air burst. They have the same vet options as the regular mortar. Why are they firing so fast, like machine gun mortars or something? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they fire faster. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're bugged AF, man. I've never seen a mortar fire that fast in Cubby Heroes. I thought I was well on trained. times two speed. That was stupid. I just yeah. don't think they've been balanced yet because no one started using them until like a couple of weeks ago or something. But, uh. Yeah, they're not balanced in the slightest. It's like a beta unit. That's ridiculous. I mean, I, I get the logic, you know, they can't move, so you got to make it worth building, but I I hate playing against them. There's certain maps, especially the 2v2 maps, where it can be pretty hard to get to them, and by the time you get the counters out, they're vet 3, and they just don't die. The yeah, the mortars are dying, though, no, yeah. <laughs> by the way, the artillery officer's artillery does nothing to mortar pits, just to let you guys know we've tested that this gas. That's certainly happened. Theo... Unfortunately, looks like he's heading to loser bracket if he can't make it happen here. He's really struggling Let's to push through. <laughs> it's so, they get so much more health. I think it's like a, I think it might be like 1k health at that three or something. It's insane. Wow. He's yeah. lost everything in mid. Both weapons teams are down trying to push these yeah. mortar pits. Exactly. He's just gotten angry. He tried to kill the mortar pits. Now he's trying to take the AT guns. And no, he's just going to fire on the mortar pits. No. <laughs> That one was vet one when this engagement started. Oh. Now that one's vet three as well. Oh dear. He had another yeah. wipe there as well. Theo's army's disintegrated. The mortar pits baited. I mean, oh, I understand the vet three needing to go in. Alive, for fuck's sake. He was not ready to make that push. It feels like he's sort of desperation pushed into those mortar pits and like threw his whole army away. Oh. Well, he does rescue the weapon. You did. Might be able to rescue both weapons, so that's, that's good. Yeah, he got some stuff back to his uh, med bunker there. That's, uh, that's not too bad. He's got a Panzer IV on its way. He somehow kept uh, the middle victory point during all of that. Well, sorry, obviously he was in the middle, but he's kept two victory points during all of that, and he's only down to 67. But with the 105 now making its way onto the field, he's still got two AT guns. The time is uh is gonna tick out for theo very shortly i feel yeah i just i, I think there's a reason that 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 ray had uh never go where my tier four just like plastered on his stream for the last <laughs> few days the, the, this p4 could just be a martyr and a, a word like instead oh and man. Theo would be in a better position if, if that was what he had because this there's already two at guns so this p4 is not gonna have a fun time contesting mid uh, Vermont tier 4 just straight up needs another unit adding to it. For me, it's just not good enough. I just I just don't get it. Maybe make the um, the mechanized panther a command panther. Oh, Jaeger snipe. There we go. Make it a command panther and then add the panther to Vermont tier 4. Do something like that. Right now, it's just panther. not worth it. I want panther in tier 4 so badly. You could nerf Shreks, too. If you put the panther in tier 4, you could nerf Shreks. You could nerf the martyr. And um, you could give people a reason to tech tier 4. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. All right, artillery officer has been largely useless so far. Um, yeah, he's, he's using it so far forward. Uh, it, he could be hiding it behind the houses and, yeah, and using yeah. the very edge of the circle. It feels like he's he's like clicking on the units, you know, putting the... This is, you know, he's not a team game abuser, or he'd know the, 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 the tricks of the officer. 
if you you can just you just need the edge of the circle to touch the enemy unit you should never be in range yeah exactly yeah this, they're, they're all like buildings the he could have used it from behind and he's just not used it properly flak 30 now taken out it's the at guns creep is coming for theo's position before did dangerously close to a mine there yeah well, it's not that. his own mine though i think it's his own mine there's an M1 mine in um, in between the. Oh, there is. The yeah, there's a circle there. one. Sorry, I just saw that. My bad. Yeah. We can uh, we can forgive you for not being able to see these essentially invisible uh, little, little gray circles. <laughs> gray circles. Just the Bermat one so much more pops to me than that US one. That US one's tiny. Yeah. Ooh, we just had another wipe. Yes, another wipe. That was the pioneer dying for Theo. As the Vet three rifles are on the run. Yeah. Good. Very low MVPs. I really like great play to cap the bot, though. Uh, that's, that's good to see. Harassing the fuel and stopping the bleed. That's so important. Got our 53 left. Yeah, 53 ticking down. Havoc still on 308. Who could have seen that the US player would win game three? On... Okay, to, to, to be fair, I think um, this, is, this was not a uh, US FOP thing so much as a uh, mortar pits causing Theo to lose his mind thing. <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't going to be the mortar pits, it might have been something else, to be fair. But no, yeah, I agree. If it wasn't for the mortar pits, they really did hard counter this DDL style. Thanks for the acronym, by the way. I'm totally taking that one. But uh, yeah, it did really give him a psychological issue, and he definitely pushed too hard to try and get rid of them. And he only ended up killing one as well. Oh, unfortunate. He also tech tier 4, which um, arguably not optimal play for where no. to tech tier 4. So, if Ray says I'd it, I'm going to have to believe it. Yeah. I mean, a back tech to tier 3 would have been better against the Mortar Pits, because then you can creep up, you know, you give, give yourself a screen with the Coastal and the Wizard, and you know, the Martyrs can't push up because of the AT guns, but but Pax could mm. and, and take out the Mortar Pits. Nebel would be better against the AT gun wall. I just, I, I feel like tier 4 was, was a big throw here. Um, Tier, tier 3 or more Tier 2 units, both would have been uh, much more helpful. I just thought he was playing Code 2 for a second, he wanted the Panther, the Brumbear, Panther Verfa. It's definitely a hard habit to break. I still find myself building Tier 4 because I'm like, oh, I have the fuel. Oh, obviously, the, the <laughs> yeah. tier is this, this tier. This should be great. Yeah, this should make perfect sense. It, it doesn't. Spoiler alert. Yeah, and then oh, my P4 dies to a Chaffee, and I, I realize I've made another terrible mistake. <laughs> That's right, because basically Chaffee's with a bit of assistance counter Panzer fours, which is ridiculous, isn't it? Let's look at the Shreks trying to kill the uh, Mortar Pit here. Come on, <laughs> Shreks! Oh, they're not going to do it! <laughs> they're they're not going to do it, Daniel! They're going to die is what they're going to do. They're probably going to lose both squads here. Oh, he, he got rid of it with the officer! This He's a hero! Oh, we did it! He did. Wow. And if this wreck gets away, then, uh, you know, call it a win. Cool. All right. Eric victory, indeed. Just and uh, VP, uh... VP wise, by the way, he's actually been able to cap, cap the south for a period just before this. And he's recaptured the center now. So he's only, got, well, he's managed to keep 47 victory points. Oh, no. Mind trigger there, MP now. Worth noting, I think, um, a lot of manpower spend reinforcing um, Shrek models this game. And I think that's one of the weaknesses of going triple coastal with no Gren, is Theo's been down on manpower basically all game. We can see mm. now he's, you know, 127 fuel, way too much muni, actually, but no manpower to do anything. So I think I think having a Gren here might have made a big difference. But yeah. really just, I think, I think spend, finding a way to spend this muni, you can actually find yourself not able to... Spend your muni with coastals. Like, oh, get the mines up. Officer about to be targeted on retreat, I feel. Panzer IV trying to save the day. There's a grenade to force away the rifles. Officer somehow survived that. But the central victory point may not survive in the north. We've just had a mine detonate. The captain's looking to cap that there. And, yeah, this could be the end. I think so. Yeah, I think really needed to find, like you said earlier, more mines or... Losing a game with 300 muni means you did something wrong, right? I mean, yeah, you gotta, you gotta find find a way to use those. And it's hard with coastal sometimes, but that's why you spam bunkers and then drop registered already on them. You don't even have to upgrade the bunker. You just put a bunker behind the the, the mosque 
or the, whatever the middle building is, and just spam registered already when your opponent tries to take uh, take the VP. Ooh, I call it Casbah because of like the flash Casper. song. But GG well played has been called by Theo, GG. and US OP wins. <laughs> Please don't give the Weirabus more ammunition AE. They don't. They don't. They don't need encouragement. Dude, if they just you know built the Panther one month earlier, the whole thing would have gone differently. I'm telling you. Yeah. That was close though. I think I think Theo had some good opportunities there, but have it played really well and I think really big brain play like the double mortar pit was all the the difference maker because it was looking like it was swinging in Theo's favor, but once the indirect came in, that was uh that was all she wrote for the camp fest. Yeah. Yeah, it could have gone differently. I'm really excited for the uh, balance patch that can't come soon enough. I think I mean, do we really have another month of this exact meta? We, we kind of know the changes we want to see as well, don't we? And uh, But uh, the good thing about having a tournament is, as you rightly mentioned earlier, Daniel, is we will truly test, is this meta stationary? Is there any way Wehrmacht can uh, overcome US? And when are we finally going to see DAC? Like, I, th I was hearing DAC were like un un irresistible. So w w why aren't DAC in the tournament at this point? I agree. I'm surprised we haven't seen more deck. I think that they have a much easier time against the the Jeep Open than a lot of the Wehrmacht builds do. Although, I, I want to say on that, I, I, I'd like to see the Pyro Spam build come out at least once here. Um, mm. I actually think it might be pretty good against the uh, the double Jeep Open, and we haven't seen I haven't seen it yet in the tournament. Um, but I think deck people are pr afraid of playing deck because they're afraid of um, getting ran over with uh, armor tier three spam. I think yeah. without a Shrek, like P P Panzer Jaegers can't fight the M8 and I think if you don't have a dominant early game, if you don't have like a really clever way to play around your 250, I think you just die to to US armor. I think I think Wehrmacht is still better in terms of having an answer to that. But we'll see. I I, I agree. I'd, I'd love to see some DAC. And uh, I, I hope people try new stuff. I don't think the um, 2 Pio 3 Coastal build is really the answer to the Jeeps. So I'd, I'd like to see some other stuff. I'm fact checking uh, Daniel here, guys. I'm fact checking him because he said he won tournaments plural and he did I won say the other in... i won i won the first um two co the the beta tournament in uh company for two me and twister won the 2v2 tournament oh a 2v2 event i need that on sorry guys what you're seeing is uh we're trying very hard to uh, put the 2v2 side of things into my tawny histories uh some guys have been helping me namely tommy and um, Von Aston. We're trying to find all the tournaments. So that's one we're missing, I think. Interesting. I think it was a Sunday Night Fights uh, tournament. I can, I can try to send you the link. I think I have Please, it yeah. I, th I think uh, we're missing that. SNF. So you did win two tournaments. Okay. Very good. More than I've ever won. Well, only because um, the other... Uh, oh, me and Twister played well. The other top team wasn't willing to to abuse hard enough. They they thought, or I don't know if they weren't willing or, or didn't think it was good, but um, initially they were relic was considering having um, access versus access and allies versus allies, and so in custom games it was possible. Yes, so they the were considering. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, I remember that. And so in the tournament we played mixed, and Twister and I were the best were the best at abusing. Um, uh, what's it? Yeah, I'm I'm forgetting what you call the Wehrmacht in Co2 now, but. Uh, this is how much I've banished it. They're called my Wehrmacht. Everything's called Wehrmacht. Is it Wehrmacht. just Wehrmacht? It wasn't, it wasn't Wehrmacht were always Wehrmacht. The community okay. tried to call them Ost here in uh, That's Kochi. right. That's right. Okay, I knew there was something. Anyway, we played Soviets in Wehrmacht, and uh, it was really strong. Yeah, yeah. Soviets and Wehrmacht combined sounds. This is. Uh, it sounds like a tournament you've invented. I'm very eager to see if it exists. A mixed. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, okay. I've never seen that before, so that sounds amazing. Please find me the up. brackets. I need rec I need this on my list of things that have happened. Uh, but there we go. We've got. I've found the exact event. I actually only added this to my. Uh, I've been validating my oh, list nice. recently for the Good one people tournament. I have found you. I found what your tournament. What big names did I beat? Well, what big names didn't you beat? <laughs> is the easy way to say it. You beat. Shade2O... Let me zoom in on some of these names. It's not easy to recognize who they are, sorry. Shade2O5. Uh, complexity. Yep, you definitely beat him. And then the legend that is Armaco. 
I think that says. Yep, well done. Um, you beat Shade205 twice, which is quite nice. Good for you. Oh, you beat CS. There you go. There's a name. You beat a oh, name. Yeah. I'm stuck on that mode for some reason. Okay. You beat CS, who was number one seed. Oh, no, you were number one seed. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's because you got a bye to the second round. So you must have been seeded first. You were hot was, shit, man. Ibkaifun was, was like, the, uh... Daniel D's the only Co-1 player. Let me do it, guys, voice. Daniel D's the only Co-1 player I recognize, so I'm going to put him at the top. I think I was relatively be. high up in the ladder in uh, the beginning of, at least in the beta. I played a lot when it came out. I was very excited about Co-2. Um, yeah, so was I. Um, the beta was much better than the release. Do you remember that? Like, the beta, for some reason, I, like, had this cool, I thought really cool, um, everything had really high range. Like, all the units oh, yeah. could shoot, like, two screens of range. Like, it was really cool. It made it feel like a... I, I don't know, like a, a war, like a real-world war or something. <laughs> But, like, everything was on Moscow outskirts, if you remember. Like, these beta games that you played. I, I imagine they were on Moscow outskirts. There was, like, one 1v1 map and one 2v2 map at one point. So Yeah, and that's all we've had to play on. It was Moscow it was outskirts Pri for 1v1. I think was the other one. Yeah, appropriate for 1v1, sorry. And Moscow Ugh. outskirts for 2v2. But So we just played on Moscow outskirts instead. Because, obviously, Pripyat was trash. But, um, yeah, it was good times. Everything could shoot, like, two screens of range. So it was, like, really interesting to me. And I was playing with loads of... I was in a StarCraft II clan at the time, and we were playing a lot of beats, uh, Co2 Beta, and we loved it. And then when the game came out, they, they didn't have that crazy range. I was like, oh, that's a shame. It was interesting. It wasn't in the co-spirit, I guess. Yeah. It Arnie, well, thanks for letting me cast. Really appreciate it. I got to... Uh... Gotta get back Dude, to work Dude, I'll let you go. Thanks so much for watching, uh, guys, uh, on YouTube. Uh, big up, Daniel D. W what's your media? What can we? Uh, how can we catch you? I Twitch am. Uh, I, can put it in, I think I can put it in the chat here, right? Or no, I don't know. It's Daniel D underscore Co. I'll on, spell it out for Twitch. you. Uh, something like that, probably. Uh, yeah, you got it. That's me. Wow, I typed correctly. Uh, you have a good rest of your day, mate. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thanks. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.